RM is, is committed, if you define the multiplication, it's all defined, then you get the same office, and you need RM. Yes, you need to define golden egg groups. Projective models is little far from, a uh, little complicated from the free models. Now there are some models we consider in between that is called stably isomorphic, sorry, stably free models. That is if the red summer part I, we can choose to be free, then P is called stably free. And two models P and Q are said to be stably isomorphic if after adding some, some free part not necessarily R should be equal to M, they are isomorphic in the canon. Few facts, definitely they are isomorphic in the canon, if and only if they are steadily isomorphic. And this class is same as the class of Rn, if this is steadily free. And if R satisfies the eigen property, then one can show that this cannot R is actually the group of integers. And that is if and only for every finitely generated projective R model is free. Our aim is to calculate cannot for Levit path algebras of directed graph. But E is the directed graph, we want to calculate K0 of NKE. Is it okay? Okay. Before doing that, we we shall define few things. One is first, we shall start with exchange rings. That means let M be an R model. We say that M has exchange property. Uh, if for every R model A, A at any decomposition, if I can write A, if where A is direct sum of M prime within, and equals to direct sum of Ai with M prime is isomorphic to M. There exist submodules in A prime of A, A prime I of Ai such that A equals to M prime this. That is, if this decomposition I can break into some more parts with some conditions. So it follows this Ai prime must be a direct sum of Ai. Yeah, it follows from here. And if the above condition is satisfied, then whenever the index set is finite, we say M satisfies finite exchange property. Oh, do so, you have any examples? No, this, uh, we, are, we don't need it. For details, you can see papers by uh, those references. Exchange rate, but it has it is a big class and uh, R satisfied finite exchange, oh sorry, uh, we say that the ring satisfied finite exchange properties if it satisfies as an R module. And uh, there it, this class is big and it includes all semi-regular rings. Semi-regular means that means R or Jacobson radical is regular and uh, you can lift uh, I, I mean, at importance modulo Jacobson, Jacobson radical can be lifted. So this regular is one more than regular? Yes. yes. Okay. Refinement property. <laughs> so I am just giving few definitions. One is exchange property, then is refinement property. We shall start again with the finitely generated project FPR, that class. And we take elements from there. Suppose A1 direct sum A2 is isomorphic to B1 direct sum A2 implies there exists AI such so that each AI can be decomposed in this way, AI1 and AI2 for each I. And you can write this BJ, each BJ can be written in terms of A1J direct sum A2J. That is, more explicitly, if you start with a monoid, abelian monoid, it is a refinement monoid provided given A plus B, C plus D implies there exists XYZT such so that you can break A into A as X plus Y and B as Z plus T while C equals to X plus Z and uh, D equals to Y plus T. You can represent it in terms of a table. If you go through the literature, but I am unable to write on board and also I could not manage to write here in this thing. So 
just skipping but you can write say a b write a b and c d and then write x y z t so this is saying you can write express a as this x z and b t and also this c can be written as the sum of rows and also you can extend uh, so this is also uh, we say that our vr <coughs> is defined by monoid provided this class satisfies the this is this has monoid structure we have already discussed so it will be defined by monoid provided this fpr satisfies the refinement property again our aim is to show that v of lke is a refinement monoid that is the refinement matrix I mentioned just now. By induction, one can extend the refinement property for any finite n for given a1 plus a2 plus a n and b1 plus b2 this sum. There exists xij such that you can write this in composition. This class is also very large and every semigroup can be can be embedded in a refinement monoid. There is a result which says that if R is an exchange ring, then this F pair satisfies the refinement property. Hence, V R is a refinement monoid. So, is this refinement monoid in this general sense or earlier? This general sense? Yes. What? This is a more general definition of refinement. Yes, you can. S no, the thing is, no, no. if it is exchange ring, then it satisfies the refinement monoid. Not otherwise, it's not. As you have defined in this slide. Oh, this way. Yeah. Yeah, this way you can give the more general definition for n classes. Which is this more general definition? This is a refinement monoid. Oh, so you have for for two by two. Oh, just for two by two. Just for two by two, then we define. Then we say it is refinement, and then you can, uh, if you get for two by two, then by induction, of course, oh, you will get for n classes. So separative rings. The term separate variety is borrowed from semi-group theory. For all A, B, C in FPR, we say uh, two projective modules are cancellative if A directs on C isomorphic to B directs on C implies A directs A is isomorphic to B. And actually, this cancellation property it is uh, it's a very important property, and many commutative algebraists, K theorists, they use this property. And this is one of the properties which was used to uh, give a proof of Serre's conjecture. And uh, still many people are working on these things. And uh, so next is, but uh, we are defining this uh, something in, we are not in the commutative setup, we are in the non commutative associative setup. We are defining something more, that is uniqueness of n nth root. That is, if the n copies of A is isomorphic to n copies of B, then that will imply A is isomorphic to B. And then it, is, it should be isomorphic. Yeah. R is separative if this three isomorphism a direction A isomorphic to A direction B isomorphic to B direction B implies A equals to B. By observation one can see that this uh, separative rings uh, modules, this, this includes the cancellative modules and the uniqueness of an effort for some n greater than equal to two. <coughs> so a ring R will be called separative <coughs> ring if this uh, finitely generated project model, this class is separative class of modules, if all modules are separate. See, you see that here, this we are considering something more than cancellative. So, it is more general than cancellative property. So, let us discuss the properties of separative rings. So, separativity for a ring R is equivalent to any of the following conditions. So, before this, let me just explain you why I am defining all these things. Because we are going to show that we are calculating the K0 of LKE. That means the group completion of VR. 
V L K, right? And then we'll, we shall, uh, I mean, there is a result which shows that this is isomorphic to a monoid, abelian monoid. So it is enough to study the structure of that abelian monoid, and as a result, we'll get the structure of the K naught group. Separative ring properties that separativity of ring is equivalent to any of the following conditions for all ABC and FPR. So if 2A is isomorphic to 2B and 3A is isomorphic to 3B, then A is isomorphic to B. See here 2 and 3 are two consecutive numbers. And it is equivalent to if there is a stain such that N is isomorphic to NB and n plus 1a is isomorphic to n plus 1b, then a is isomorphic to b. Or, but it is something than n approach. So, if a direction c is isomorphic to b direction c, and if c is isomorphic to say n copies of a and n copies of b, that means if I, if we can replace c by a a, a, a and here C by NB for some MN, then one can show that this is as A is isomorphic to B. So this implies separativity, this is equivalent to separativity. Yes. But see your third condition 3 hmm. is a special case of cancellation. No, no. C is isomorphic to MN. Here, here, here. Uh, see, the thing is, uh, here you are saying something more. We need, you are imposing some more condition. No, so you are you are saying that cancellation should could, uh, should hold for some specific C. Oh, uh, you mean that uh, because earlier when you defined cancellation, you said that C could be anything, any model, okay. any projective model. Yeah. So, and then here you are saying that cancellation is a subset of separability. Separability. Yeah. Yeah. So in fact, what we in the, these two slides we are showing is cancellation is equal to separation. No, in the commutative case it is equal, otherwise it is not. So here you need to, it is not obvious that her condition it need to be similar. Uh, here n not equal to n. So if I give you cancellation, then yeah. 3 will hold automatically. Yeah, so if if right I right. give you cancellation, Then you don't need this condition. Thank you. So property 3 is called separative cancellation. And the fact for, for an exchange ring R, the separability is what can show equivalent to, it is enough to check for uh, A direction to C uh, for 2, implies that A is isomorphic to B. Examples of separated rings, that rings, uh, all rings with stable rank A, that is actually what, uh, means if you see the literature, it's a large class of uh, levy algebra that has stable rank 1. And any uh, ring whose uh, finitely generated projective models enjoy the uniqueness of square roots. How do you define stable rank 1? Ah, stable rank uh, means, in general, actually, I wanted to give, but I thought no, it would no, just stable rank 1, how do you no, stable rank 1, that means if I give you a uh, two um, row uh, array, uh, a vector of length, <coughs> then you can stink it to 1. In modular vector. In general, in uh, given in modular vector of length n, if you can stink it to n minus 1. <coughs> so the class of separated rings are closed under arbitrary direct product and so remember these things because uh, after some time I am going to use this fact that it is uh, closed under, that is uh, commutes. Now we have uh, defined exchange property, refinement property and separative property and now we, we are going back to the graph agendas. So direct, we, we start with the direct graph, a directed graph E with a set of edges, a set of vertices, edges and range and S and range and source maps and consider the, so this is not actually we are going to use but I am just defining that, so let A be W, the number of edges going from B to W. 
then we can define the adjacent matrices uh, AE with this AV W. That's the VW in N, E naught. So E is row finite group if A is a finite number of non zero entries. If and only if each vertex in E emits only finite number of edges. That already you have started all these things. So, let E be a row finite graph and K be a field. So, the graph algebra LKE associated with E is the K algebra generated by PV, these projections and the axes. I am just going quickly that you know all these definitions. So, observe that 1 implies the set is consisting of pair as orthogonal idempotents here and E row finite implies this that you can deduce. And okay, let us define the graph homomorphism. We will start with the two <coughs> graphs E and F, and F is a homomorphism. So E means the pair E naught E1 and F is F naught F1, and we say F is a graph homomorphism if it is a pair such that F naught maps E naught to F naught, and F1 maps E1 to F1 such that this is this. We have this compatible relation. Again, I am unable to write on board, so just draw the picture of the commutative diagram, uh, sorry, uh, of the diagram that E naught, F, F naught, and then you have this range uh, function RF and RE and source function, and then you will get the diagram commutative. Now, we need special type of homomorphism to get a induces homomorphism, induced homomorphism from uh, in the Levit path algebra level. Here, we have two graphs E and F, we have graph homomorphism. Now, we want to induce another homomorphism in the LKE to LKF level. So, for that we need to define the complete homomorphism. So, if F0 is in, so we say that something is complete homomorphism if F0 is injective and F1 restricted to this S inverse E, V is a bijection for every V that emits edges. So, let G be the category whose objects are row finite graphs and whose morphisms are complete graph homomorphisms. The fact is that again this G admits direct limits. So, <coughs> this direct limits term I am repeating. So, using this functoriality, functoriality property of the construction, one gets that every row finite graph is, is a direct limit in the category G of a directed system of finite graphs. While working for K0, using this fact, we shall pass through the finite graph. Instead of working on row finite graph, we shall work on finite graphs. So, let F, uh, so this would be small f, f be a complete homomorphism. It induces a homomorphism in the Levit path level. And we get LF from LKE to LKF in a canonical way. So, again we have this compatible uh, relations and again you can define the, sorry, you can draw the diagram and your square diagram is commutative. F is complete homomorphism if and only if 1 to 5 remains, remains <coughs> preserved. So, you see this uh, 5 relationship to define the graph uh, things, you need to preserve and beca because of that you need complete homomorphism. Our next result is that lemma 2, so which says that LKE is direct limit of LKXI, where XI is the directed family of finite graphs and the functor LK is continuous that is commutative so directly. While calculating this, it is enough to calculate LKXI where XI is a finite graph. Now, if you recall that we have defined exchange property, separability property and uh, refinement property of monoid. So, I will go back to monoid. I, uh, sorry, I am going to construct a monoid in E 
using this uh, graph E. So defined AB is the abelian monoid given by the generators AB with the relation this. See this relation is just motivation of again the way you define uh, AB projection. We just take this. AV is summation of ARI for every V that emits edges. Every complete graph homomorphism F induces natural monoid homomorphism. Now we have monoid homomorphism MF from ME to MF in a natural way again. Hence, we get a functor M from this group uh, G, this category of, you remember? <laughs> We have this G, this is a category whose objects are all row finite graphs and whose morphisms are complete graph homomorphisms. We get a functor M, this N is a functor from this G to category of abelian monoids and M commutes with the direct limits. Okay. Now our problem is that many times NK is non unit so, we start with the i is non-unital non k-algebra and r is unital k-algebra containing i as two-sided idea. We define <coughs> FPIR is the class of all projective models such that P is IP. Then as before we define VI, abelian monoid of isomorphism classes of this P. Don't confuse with the previous P. So, above definition of VI is well defined, it doesn't depend on the choice of the initial ring. So, if this is a functor for commutes with the direct limit, so we are getting non-unitary rings to abelian monoid. I mean, you can always find an R with this uh, property, unitary mm -hmm. K algebra, which has I is two sided. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can always find an R. Sorry? You can always find an R like this. Yes. And uh, that yeah, is a universal one also. No, no. no, this is not because this, this doesn't, you don't need. It, you can prove that this defined is well defined. So, as LK is a ring with local units, one observes that using this, that K0 LK is the Grothendieck group of V LK. That is, here this is I, we plus I by LK. So an ideal is separative ideal uh, if VI is separative monoid. Here we shall uh, recall a very, uh, we don't need it, but it is uh, good to remind this extension theorem for the separative property that I, an ideal in, the, in an exchange ring R, R is separative if and only if I and R mod R is separate. Like many other properties in your group theory, in theory, here also we have uh, this property. And that is VI and <coughs> VR mod I are separated monoids, then so is VR. So due to a counter example of group, group theory, uh, this, this is not true for cancellative property. So separability leads to better closure property than cancellative. Now, we are going to compute the V of LK. So let E be a rho finite graph. There is this <coughs> unique homomorphism gamma E from ME to V LK E such so that here you remember the how we constructed ME is the mm -hmm. monoid generated by these symbols AV. So we are defining gamma E on AV the class of this projections. If uh, E to F. What is PV here? PV is this LK, the definition of LK. Should we call that? Oh, okay, the single path given by what is yes. So if uh, E to F complete graph homomorphism, then using the result of Bartman, uh, it can be shown that for every finite graph E, the map gamma E is a monoid isomorphism. Hence, by lemma 2 and lemma 3, so do you remember lemma 2 and lemma 3, where we can? Huh? I don't understand. V, v is that uh, 
V of LK is a monoid, monoid generated by the projectors over yes. over V LKE. And so you are saying that A B is uh, mapping to some projector. So yeah, basically from here you can go to the K naught and uh, maybe some symbols. So what is the what is gamma E of A B? It's some it's some class of the class symbol. of this here is the you remember this V V L K E. This abelian isomorphism class is this. Yeah, that's fine. But PV, what is PV there? So it's a projective module or what? Yes. Uh, so you go back to the play, latest slide. Where you are, where you left just that <coughs> there. Uh, so I think PV is like the important corresponding to the vertex. Right. And then you consider the, the right ideal or left ideal generated by Oh, by that. single word. Yes, by the single word. Yes. And that is projective always? No, no, uh, Yes, because it's an ideal potent. So if you have an ideal potent, then the right or left ideal generated by an ideal potent is, is projected because the complement is 1 minus the ideal potent. Yes, exactly. So, so if... Uh, but we only... She is only putting the generator. So that is important. She is not putting all the left side there, only the generator. I think this is the idea. So it's the left side there, but well, the previous definition would be the left side there generated by this. What is this? I don't want to see. So if uh, this is a complete graph of then also. Uh, if it is a complete graph of then it induces a homomorphism in the Levitt path level. So then one can use some result and by using that lemmas on direct limits that direct li it commutes uh, with direct limit we can reach to a finite graph and then one can show that gamma is a monoid isomorphism for low, low finite graph. That is one can show that P of LP is isomorphic to M. The sketch is that Sorry, can you just explain Godman's film? No, 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 I don't know. Okay. I, I, I sh should not. Okay. The thing is, I don't want. Uh, I don't want, and that's why you skip this. And this, this is a non trivial result. Okay, okay, so this is a monoid homomorphism. Mm -hmm. So, the proof, proof is sketch. Uh, I mean, sketch of proof is that we should we start with a finite graph, and uh, you need monoid homomorphism gamma e from a e to a e so that we have this definition and then we have this diagram ME from B L I I mean we have this map gamma e and gamma f and also you remember that we f induces a uh, monoid monoid level sorry f induces a monoid homomorphism mf And uh, here also we have um, this map. Therefore, uh, this diagram is commutative. If it is a, uh, then enough to show that gamma is uh, gamma is a E is a monoid isomorphism. That, that is our E. So it is enough to show for every finite graph EI because it uh, <coughs> commutes with the direct limit. And again, one can use uh, here the Bartman's result to get the result, final result. Now we know that uh, ME is isomorphic to VLK. So to study the Brodenty group of LK, it is enough to study the ME. So in next few minutes, I, I shall discuss that we start with a row finite graph. One can show that the monoid ME is defined by monoid and the monoid ME is separated monoid and as a consequence one gets the class FP LK, LKE satisfies the refinement property and the LKE is a separated thing. And the monoid VLKE is an, sorry, it's something I have written. I 
So it means that if I make more money. So here, we start with the row finite graph and construct the free abelian monoid on the set E0. So each element of x can be written as summation <coughs> xi, where xi is it? E0. Then we define a relation m on f, uh, x equals to rx for every x in E0, this, is, this should be E0, that emits edges, where rx is that Again, this construction you remember, this we are taking the summation of Re such that Ac is going to x. This is x minus, so you are questioning by x minus Rx. Sorry? The relation is x minus Rx. No, no, no. Okay. x equals to Rx. So basically, so basically we are defining... Question by x minus Rx. You are making x equal to Rx. x equals to Rx. So we define relation... <laughs> this one on f minus 0, that is summation xin, that is an element of f and median <coughs> index here, such that xj emits edges. Then one can, we define this rela binary relation by uh, summation xin, this relation is uh, uh, summation xij plus rj. So this, uh, this is the, uh, so basically from somewhere we are going this way. If I could write these things uh, in the board, it would have been better. Just but go back to the last slide. So this is the transitive, the transitive and reflexive closure of that uh, relation. So here alpha uh, related to beta, if and only if there is a finite string such so that you can reach alpha equals to alpha naught, then I mean af after finite stage you can reach to beta. And then you are considering that uh, to, to give a group stuff, I mean equivalence relation, you have to consider the uh, paths in opposite directions also. I mean, alpha symmetric to beta, if and only beta related to yeah, symmetric property. Mm -hmm. So, this is the congruence on A generated by alpha uh, this uh, one. And then alpha is related to alpha and alpha equivalent to beta, if and only if there is a finite string. So, you are going from alpha to beta, you are allowing alpha i to alpha i plus 1 and also in the opposite direction. So, alpha 1, you are also allowing these words, path in these words. Then, the n is length of the string. Then this is, uh, this forms a congruence on f generated by the relation and so m e is f modulo of that relation. So, we state the following fact that Assume that alpha, suppose alpha is decomposed as alpha 1 and alpha 2 and alpha you can add to beta, then beta can be written in terms of, then you can also decompose beta with alpha 1 set goes to beta 1 and alpha 2 goes to beta. We need these two lemmas just to state the next result that alpha is related to beta if and only if there is a gamma such that alpha goes to beta and beta goes to gamma. So that means suppose alpha alpha is here, beta is here, this, this path is there, if and only if there is something here, so that you can come here and you can go there, come here, from this side and that side. So then as a result wanted to, using these two lemmas wanted to prove that AB is a refinement moment. So let alpha related to beta, and alpha 1 is, alpha is alpha 1 plus alpha 2 and beta is beta 1 plus alpha beta 2. So, lemma 2 implies there exists gamma such that alpha goes to gamma and beta goes to gamma. Then by lemma 1, I, we can again break gamma into two parts. With this alpha goes to alpha i and beta goes to what beta lemma 1. Huh? Lemma 1. So, this 
we can if alpha is this then one can break beta into as beta 1 plus beta 2 with alpha 1 goes to beta 1 and alpha 2 goes to beta 2. That means first we are using the lemma 2 and then take uh, and to get this gamma and then apply it this things uh, then I by applying lemma 1 we are getting. Since f is free abelian monoid, it has definement property, hence the result follows the decomposition. Now here again we can one can show that a free abelian monoid has this definement property. This uh, relates little bit work. And then you can decompose this each alpha i prime and beta i prime to get the result. Then one can prove that m is a refinement monoid. Therefore, it proves the first part that our K0 is isomorphic to ME and ME has refinement property, therefore K0 has refinement property. Now, theorem 2, ME is separated monoid. So, proof, uh, again we start with the row finite graph, therefore ME is direct limit of monoids AMEI where EI is finite graph. Hence, we assume that it is enough to assume that E is finite graph. Then M e is generated by, see E is finite graph. By using direct limit, we can work on finite graph and consider M e i. So now, I am considering M e, that is each M e i, is generated by finite set. And therefore, finitely generated refinement monoid. If we generate monoid with that finite set, we get finitely generated monoid. And then one result of group field says that this is a separated monoid. So that means finitely generated refinement monoid is separated monoid. This is due to group field. And therefore, ME is generated by, uh, sorry, ME is uh, separated. And therefore, again, the K0 of LK is. Or if you take the direct limits, then it will again give you... No, you, you want... My K0 is K0 LK. That is isomorphic to ME. And ME is direct limit of MEI. EI is finite. Now, I am working on finite class. And then EI, we have mentioned that separativity, it commutes with the direct limit. Mm -hmm. So, your, for row finite also it works? Yeah, therefore for row finite. or comments? So the other okay, yeah. of the properties you mentioned like cancellator and cancellation, those also come with direct limits? Cancellation? Comments. Inner two comments. Inner two comments? That inner two property comments with the direct limit? Yes, well, if you have for all the members, then you have, essentially you look, you have a relation in the limit, you look at the given place, it is a place where for example, NA is equal to MB, and then there you can cancel, and then you get A equal B. So, all these equational properties go directly. Mm -hmm. Final number of equational properties go directly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay.